A couple of weeks ago, Square Enix released a demo for a new tactical RPG from producer Tomoya Asano, the same guy who brought us Final Fantasy IV Heroes of Light, the Bravely Default series, and Octopath Traveler. The game is made in a very similar vein to Final Fantasy Tactics, though it uses the HD 2D pixel art style from Octopath Traveler, and its title, tentatively, is Project Triangle Strategy. Now, while Octopath Traveler was originally announced as Project Octopath Traveler back in 2017, the name ended up sticking by the time the game was released later the next year. Let's hope that isn't the case here, because Triangle Strategy is a terrible name. However, the game itself is impressive, and shows a lot of potential. There are three battles the player can access in this demo, and the latter two especially are engaging and unique in their layout, scenario, and design. It's important to note that based on a choice you'll make after the first battle, you won't be able to see all three battles in a single run, since the story splits into two directions. So, in order to access the third battle, you'll have to start the demo over and play up to that point again, or just make sure to create a backup save file so that you can go the other route. More on that in a minute though. First, I want to say that I thoroughly enjoyed each of these battles. I'm a big fan of tactical RPGs, and this one holds up when it comes to the diversity between each battle's design gimmick, units, abilities, and overall strategy. Even more so than in other games, I found myself relying on each unit in different ways, and made good use of individual strengths. For instance, Anna, who is the thief unit for this game, though I think her technical designation is spy. She's unique in that she gets to act twice every turn. Her damage is lower than other units, but there's one specific way to utilize her that makes her extremely valuable. Whenever you have two units flanking an enemy from opposite sides, after the first unit finishes with his or her attack, the ally unit will also get in an additional attack. Therefore, when you use Anna in one of these pincer maneuvers, she'll get to attack twice, which means your ally will also get a second hit in, equaling four attacks total by the end of the turn. Each character has their own sort of unique benefits like this, and all of them were useful at various times. I found myself constantly casting buffs, planning my routes to either attack enemies from behind or flank them, or even knocking enemies off of ledges for extra damage. I was also impressed by the general UI and layout of information. There's always a lot to consider in tactical games like this, and I found it easy to find all the info I needed when planning my moves. I always understood what my abilities would do, which enemies would be able to reach me if I moved onto a specific tile, what my chances of success were, and basically anything else I wanted to know. This makes a game that fits under an intricate and niche genre feel as accessible as ever, and the learning curve is super smooth. That being said, despite the similarities to Final Fantasy Tactics, don't expect the brisk pacing of a Yasumi Matsuno game. I would describe Project Triangle strategy as a bit cutscene heavy, especially after finishing the first battle. Some of this, of course, is due to the fact that cutscenes are voice acted, which will always make them take a little longer, but nonetheless, there's just kind of a lot of scenes to get through. Admittedly, there's a lot of optional cutscenes the game throws at you that you don't have to watch, but if you decide to skip them, you won't get a chance to review them later. At least I didn't see a way of doing that. This means you're going to miss some bits of context to the story if you skip them, but nothing that will hurt your overall understanding of what's going on. I guess my point is this. In three hours of playing Final Fantasy Tactics, I went through ten battles. In three hours of time spent with Project Triangle Strategy, I finished two. The gameplay might be similar, as well as the politically driven drama, but the style of the storytelling is not. There's a lot more dialogue and just more cutscenes generally, and to me it felt a bit bloated. That being said, part of this is due to the fact that the battles are much longer than in Tactics, and that mostly has to do with the fact that you have more units in your party. Usually you have five or six units in a battle in FFT, and here you have nine. There are also more enemies on the field too, so that explains at least somewhat why it takes longer. None of this is to say that the game is bogged down to a degree that it's no longer enjoyable, but I do prefer scenes that are more tightly directed and edited, and that get players back into the action in just a few minutes, rather than building up to the next fight over the course of 15 to 20. That being said, I was pleasantly surprised by the voting system they've implemented here. It was probably my favorite part of the whole demo outside of the actual battles. 
Basically, after the first mission, the main protagonist is presented with a really difficult choice. Protect his childhood friend, or the people of his realm he's responsible for. During this phase, all the characters in the party cast their vote as to which course they'll pursue, and you have a chance to talk to them and persuade them to one side or the other. If you don't do this, the party might vote against the choice that you want to make, so it's worth your time to try to change their minds. You can even go out into the town and learn additional information that gives added context to these decisions, which unlocks new dialogue options when trying to persuade your allies. It's a simple thing, but I thought it was a really unique idea. Depending on which choice you make, you'll fight a completely different battle, and potentially, the story goes in a totally different direction. This opens the door for multiple endings and very different playthroughs depending on your choices, and while it's impossible to see just how far they'll take this in the final game, I'm nevertheless interested to find out when it comes out next year. And that more or less wraps up my thoughts on the demo. I really liked the layouts and the unique gimmicks for the battles, the usefulness and diversity of every unit in the party, the voting system, as well as the UI and the general look and feel of the game. It's super polished already and is coming together nicely. I wish they'd trim the cutscenes up a bit and that the pace could move a little faster, but other than that, I was impressed with what I saw. If you have a Switch and haven't had a chance to give this a try yet, I'd recommend it. And uh, let me know what you thought in the comments. It'll be nice to see what other veteran tactical RPG players think as well.